This is our main mitering room here at Moots. This is where all of our raw tubing comes to us. Um, it's not just any raw tubing, it is uh, US made aerospace grade tubing. And for the mainstays of our frames, we choose to use uh, the titanium that is uh, 3 slash 2.5. And what that means is it's 3% aluminum, 2.5% vanadium mixed into pure titanium. And that gives us an alloyed tube that is stiff and strong and very resilient for bicycle building. Uh, what we have here are very uh, rudimentary Bridgeport machines that we use to miter our tubes. Um, very square, very true. We maintain these machines and they do an excellent job at mitering our tie tubing. What's very important about this section of the, the mitering is the time and the experience with the people that are running the machines, the correct feed rates, the correct RPMs to get that cut just right. Next up is welding, but before we can weld any of this titanium tubing, we've got to clean it. It's extremely important that we are very clean with the material. It's expensive to start with, and we don't want to make any mistakes. So what we do first, anywhere we are going to weld, we're polishing off uh, the ends of the tubing where a weld might be. And uh, the reason for that is to remove any of the heavy cutting oils that were uh, used in the mitering room. Anywhere we're going to touch this with a, with a weld wire, we do that, inside and out. Once the uh, buffing of the weld area has been completed, the final step of cleaning the titanium tubing uh, comes with our uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Everything that we weld in uh, titanium goes through this process. Uh, this removes any type of small amount of grease down to a little fingerprint. Uh, very important when you're looking for a very clean weld and a non-contaminated surface when welding titanium. Once the tubing's been cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner, from this point on, after it goes through the dry basket, our welding team will be handling each piece of tubing with cotton gloves. And this is to eliminate any of the uh, chances of getting a fingerprint, any kind of hand oil onto the weld surface. Next step is to put it in the mainframe jig. This holds our angles, um, the configuration of the bike that we're looking for, We'll have a blueprint that uh, follows this, and as Mark loads the jig, he's checking angles with, with the digital angle finder to make sure we're hitting the numbers we're looking for. Before we can weld this bike, we've got to create an oxygen-free environment. And the way we do that is we use argon gas to purge out any oxygen that would be inside the tube set, and that's called back purging. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to purge this frame of any uh, uh, oxygen. And then as we weld on the outside, right out of the welder's torch, the cup is blowing a very small amount of argon gas onto the surface of the weld just long enough to get down that weld. Once we have the uh, frame that's been tacked in, in the jig, it's got to come out to get uh, fully welded. With the jig, there's constraints uh, at a lot of the joints that we can't reach. So what we do is we tack this frame into place to hold the angles. And this, this tack weld is uh, called a fusion weld. And what that is is we use the tip of the tungsten to melt these two pieces of material together just using the heat. We're not add, adding any rod at this point. Um, and once that's done, it comes out of the jig, gets hung on the uh, wall, and uh, ready for the full, uh, full welding. Once we have a frame fully welded, it's time for the finish work. And for that, we head back to the finishing department, start all the delicate handwork. This is where all the uh, finish work continues after welding. First step we do, we put in a hand stamp serial number into the bottom bracket shell. This will tell us what size the frame is, date it was built, and number of frames in that year. As this bike goes through every one of our steps, a yellow tag follows it all the way to the consumer. This will tell you who welded your bike, who did the hand finishing, who put the decals on it. And to us, that's a, that's a sense of pride uh, because we all initial each step along the way. Next step is to square up the frame after welding. Um, during uh, welding, there's a bit of heat, so there is a little bit of distortion that has to be uh, uh, corrected. In our bottom bracket shell, that starts with a uh, tap of the threads and a face of the bottom bracket shell. This ensures that when this sh shows up at the dealer, 
your frame goes together correctly the first time every time. We do the same for the head tube. We do a ream and a face and the same with the seat tube. We pass a cutter through this to bring it into a perfect 27.2. The seat post goes into it right off the bat, no problems. Next up in the processes of moots is uh, alignment. So once we've uh, reamed and faced all the contact points of the bike, uh, we're working with a square surface at that point, it's time to do the alignment. What's really important is how straight these come out of the jig in the welding area. Uh, we have a very specific uh, uh, routine that we use when we weld our tubing to ensure that our bikes come out as straight as possible from the welders themselves. Every frame that we build, whether it's a road bike, cross bike, dual suspension, it goes onto this table. We're checking over the frame at about 10 different points for alignment. Uh, real similar to a car, when you take your hands off the wheel, it should track down the road perfectly straight with a high, uh, high quality product like a Moots. Um, shouldn't wobble, shouldn't uh, veer left or right. Very important process right here. If the frame is too far out of alignment, and it can't be corrected, it becomes a factory second, which uh, does not happen very often at Moots. What we're looking for here is very small quality control items, um, any type of sharp edges that were made during machining, any type of little uh, imperfection in a water bottle boss thread. Uh, this is where all the checks are going on. With Moots, uh, as it goes through the finishing, um, we're putting a wheel into each frame to make sure that as your wheel is put into the bike, it sits squarely in the, in the back end of the bike. Uh, if you flat on the side of the road, it slips into the dropouts, no problem, aligns itself self perfectly, and uh, down, down the road you go. Once all the handwork has been done, we're going to finally put our, our final finish onto this frame. We call it a satin bead blast finish. What it really is, is it's going to take this raw, shiny titanium color to a nice, smooth gray finish. And what we use there is a uh, high pressure uh, bead blast machine. Um, and uh, we use a material that looks a lot like a gray baby powder. And it's shot at the frame out of a gun just like you would paint a house or a, a car. And it gives us a nice uniform gray finish. After the frame is completely blasted, we lay our decals down by hand. Uh, this takes typically 15 minutes. Uh, then the frame will sit overnight so the glue can adhere to the tubing. Very, very important to have a nice, long-lasting, good-looking bike. Once that frame is hung overnight, we come in and we spray this frame down with Lemon Pledge. A little bit of a moot secret, but if you've got a Thai bike, it treats each one of them very nicely. In the end, in the finishing process, the bikes go into a box. This is a complete moots product. It's going to ship out to our dealers, and in North America right now, we have about 125 different uh, bike dealers. Abroad, we work with about eight different distributors, so Moots has truly grown into a worldwide company.